This is MSJ Chem and in this video I'll be looking at trends in atomic and ionic radius. So that's the trends in the atomic and ionic radius down a group and across a period in the periodic table. So we'll start by looking at how atomic radius is measured. The atomic radius is measured as half the distance between two neighboring nuclei. So here we have two atoms and two neighboring nuclei which are the red circles here and here and the atomic radius is measured as half the distance between the two neighboring nuclei. So let's start by looking at trends in atomic radius. So on this periodic table we have the atomic radius at the top and the ionic radius at the bottom. So let's take a look at group 1. So going down group 1 we have lithium which has an atomic radius of 130 times 10 to the negative 12 meters and as you can see as you go down group 1 the atomic radius is increasing. So if we look at group 2, starting with beryllium, which has an atomic radius of 99 times 10 to the negative 12 meters, you can see as you go down group 2, the atomic radius is increasing. So the general trend in the periodic table is atomic radius increases down a group. Next we look at the trend in atomic radius across a period. So we look at period 2, starting with lithium, which has an atomic radius of 130 times 10 to the negative 12 meters. Then moving on to beryllium, and then boron, and then carbon, and then nitrogen and oxygen, and then fluorine. So as you can see, as you go from left to right across a period, the atomic radius decreases. So the general trend is atomic radius decreases across a period. Next we'll have a look at the reason for the increase in atomic radius as you go down a group in the periodic table. So this is the trend in atomic radius down group 1. So here we have the first four elements in group 1, lithium, sodium, potassium and rubidium. So as you go down the group, the atomic radius is increasing. And if you look at the electronic configuration, you can see the reason for this. Lithium has two occupied energy levels, sodium has three occupied energy levels, potassium has four occupied energy levels and rubidium has five occupied energy levels. So atomic radius increases down group 1 as the number of occupied energy levels increases. This applies to all the groups in the periodic table. As you go down a group, the number of occupied energy levels increases and so does the atomic radius. Next we look at the reasons for the decrease in atomic radius across a period. So the trend in atomic radius across period 3 from sodium to chlorine, excluding the noble gas argon, you can see that the atomic radius decreases. The atomic number, which is at the top here, increases by 1 as you go across a period. So as you go from left to right in the periodic table, the nuclear charge increases. If we look at the electronic configurations of sodium to chlorine, as we go across a period, the number of electrons is increasing by 1. Another thing you'll notice is the electrons are being added to the same main energy level, which is n equals 3. Sodium has one electron in the n equals 3 energy level, magnesium has two electrons in the n equals 3 energy level, and so on until chlorine, which has seven electrons in the n equals 3 energy level. So nuclear charge increases across a period. You can see that the atomic number increases by 1 from left to right. The second point, electrons are added to the same main energy level, which in this case is n equals 3, and you can see that from the electronic configurations. So because of these two points, the energy level, which is n equals 3, is attracted closer to the nucleus, therefore the atomic radius decreases. Next we look at trends in ionic radius. So starting with group 1, which form 1 plus ions, the ionic radius of lithium is 76 times 10 to the negative 12 meters, and as we go down group 1, you can see that the ionic radius is increasing. If we look at the trend in ionic radius across a period, for example period 3, you can see that the ionic radius decreases from sodium to phosphorus, but then when we get to sulfur, it starts to increase again. That's because we are forming positive ions for sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon and phosphorus and we are forming negative ions for sulfur and chlorine. Next we'll compare the ionic radius at the bottom to the atomic radius at the top. So let's look at lithium. Lithium forms 1 plus ions and you can see that the ionic radius is smaller than the atomic radius. 
Let's look at another example, magnesium. Magnesium forms two plus ions, and the ionic radius is smaller than the atomic radius. And one more example, aluminium, which forms three plus ions. Again, the ionic radius is smaller than the atomic radius. So from these three examples, we can see that positive ions are smaller than their parent atoms. Next, we'll have a look at negative ions, starting with oxygen. So oxygen forms a two negative ion, and you can see that the ionic radius is 140 times 10 to the negative 12 meters, and the atomic radius is 64 times 10 to the negative 12 meters. So for negative ions, the ionic radius is greater than the atomic radius. Let's look at chlorine. Chlorine forms one negative ions, and you can see that the ionic radius at the bottom here is bigger than the atomic radius. So from these examples, we can see that negative ions are bigger than their parent atoms. So next, we'll have a look at the reasons for this. Let's look at positive ions or cations first. Here we have the sodium atom. The electronic configuration of the sodium atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. It has three occupied energy levels with one electron in the valence shell. When sodium forms ions, it loses this outer electron in the n equals 3 energy level to form a 1 plus ion. So here we have the sodium ion and the electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So we've lost the outer electron and we only have two main energy levels. Next, we'll compare the number of protons, electrons, and occupied energy levels in the atom and the ion. So the atom, we have 11 protons, 11 electrons, and three occupied energy levels. In the ion, we have 11 protons, 10 electrons, and two occupied energy levels. So a positive ion is smaller than the parent atom. The sodium ion has less occupied energy levels than the sodium atom. The ion has fewer electrons than protons, which we can see here. It has 11 protons and only 10 electrons. So the electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and valence electrons increases, pulling in the remaining electrons, making the positive ion smaller. Next, we look at negative ions. Here we have the chlorine atom. The electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. We have three occupied energy levels with seven valence electrons. The chlorine atom can gain one electron to form the chloride ion, which has a one negative charge. The electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Next, we'll compare the number of protons, electrons, and occupied energy levels. So for the atom, we have 17 protons, 17 electrons, and three occupied energy levels. For the chloride ion, we have 17 protons, 18 electrons, and three occupied energy levels. So as you can see from the atomic radius of the chloride ion and the chlorine atom, a negative ion is bigger than the parent atom. And here's the explanation for this. The ion has more electrons than protons, so the electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and valence electrons decreases, meaning the electrons are held less tightly, making the negative ion bigger. So that's all from the trends in ionic and atomic radius. Don't forget, if you look in the video description, you'll find a link to a worksheet complete with answers.